Hey everybody, it's Stu Smith here with a new segment called Combat Swimmer Stroke Critique with Stu and Eric. And this is Eric Burks. He's former Master Chief, Navy SEAL, probably one of the best swimmers in the teams that I've ever seen. And uh, he's going to help us with basically doing combat swimmer stroke and turn uh, critiques of you guys sending me videos of you guys doing a a lap or two and we'll break it down so eric welcome hey thanks for having me <clears throat> hey man first of all we're coast to coast i was about 10 o'clock in the morning here seven o'clock in the morning out there on the west coast for you thanks for getting up early and uh doing this thing probably not early for you but you know sometimes it's early for sunday morning working <laughs> but uh we're gl glad we could squeeze you in because i really want this to be something that uh works real well if you don't know who eric is <clears throat> let me uh let me just share my screen with you guys and let me show you so I, I have this one great picture of eric you guys might recognize him on only easy day <clears throat> um instagram uh great book uh great photo book of him when he was a buds instructor and uh you know, I've always enjoyed those uh, Buds photos and Buds videos, like 234. I think you were a Buds instructor during 234, too, weren't you? Yes. The making of a SEAL yeah. or 234. That was really cool. You know why I liked that one so much? Because it was, it was all you guys that I knew that, you know, had deployed with, were at the teams with, and then, you know, I didn't training with. And it was my first group of students that was going through that class. So for me, it's almost like a high school reunion video. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, you know what's funny about that uh, <clears throat> about that time? We got totally uh, uh, shotgunned with the idea of someone coming in. I think it was a Friday, and uh, we all got sat down by our OIC and said, hey, just FYI, there's this guy that's going to be coming. He's coming Monday. He's going to be filming. And we're like, what? And they're like... <laughs> Like, can't you can't you stop this? This is ridiculous. Why would we want to, anyone want to be on TV? This is dumb. And our OIC is like, hey, it's too late. The guy knows the admiral. It's a done deal. And so we're like, all right, yes, sir. Two bags full, sir. So, uh, <clears throat> so the the guy shows up, and I'm surprised uh, in that in that series. I'm not in it a whole lot because they said that. Listen, if you guys curse. You're not going to be in the video. So I was like, well, <laughs> I'm good to go then. <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd probably only be in there for a couple snippets, but I would go out of my way every time. Uh, I'd probably curse more during that class than I've cursed in my entire life. And I, and people who know me know that's <laughs> quite a bit. So <clears throat> so it was pretty funny. Uh, but there are some uh, – I do get some uh, heat from – a couple of little excerpts that they did pull on me when I was making fun of one guy because he was completely sandbagging a run and told him he had more drama than Shakespeare. So that I remember kinda, that. I remember that yeah. quote. That was a classic. Yeah, <laughs> classic quote. But uh, yeah, that's that's like we discussed before we came on. You know, like I, my personality hasn't changed since probably I was going through buds when you first met me. Yeah. Um, try to have fun and. uh uh, when it's time to work, work, um, have fun with the students. And, and then, uh, at the end, you know, hopefully give them something to take away. That's positive. There you go. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I tell you that, that was a, uh, unique show. Um, but the, you know, it was the night that, that, that show right there kind of encapsulates the nineties, you know, this was pre nine 11. It was, it was a weird time to be in the teams in the nineties, you know, after nine 11, it got real and, uh, things changed, changed dramatically overnight and you guys were busy. So thanks again for doing a full career because, you know, half your career was in the nineties. The other half was post nine 11, you know, you made master chief and, you know, I, it doesn't surprise me because I remember when, you know, I showed up at a, our first team that, you know, you were one of the, just sharpest guys there. You, you know, I could tell that, you know, you had your stuff together and, you know, it was my job as a young 
junior officer ensign just to keep my mouth shut and just learn from people like yourself. So I appreciate that. Even from your younger E5 to E6 phase, you were still, you know, mentoring uh, young junior officers. So I appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's well, it's a I don't know. I think it's it's one of those things I remember <clears throat> I come. I'll give you a, a, just a quick sh story. So I'm a buds instructor. Mm -hmm. I come home and uh, I'm talking. It's a, during a hell week. And I'm talking to my wife about these guys that quit, you know. And I'm like, man, this guy quit because of this. And this guy came up and and just sharing my 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 night with her. And she's like, wow. She's like, you need to take it easy on these guys. You're pretty mean to these guys. <laughs> and uh, so then, you know. Another hell week goes by. She kind of gives me the same that I'm talking to her. She's like, you know, maybe, you know, that person's going through something. I'm like, yeah, they're going through hell week. And so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then fast forward and I'm about a year out and I have to figure out what I want to do next. And I had just been working at SEAL Team 4 down in South America doing counter drug stuff for like a year and a half. Um, I would come back to the States every six months just to refresh orders and go back down there. Mm. And then, and then, um, I got back two weeks, bought a car, packed my stuff, drove cross country to become, to do the, do the buds instructor thing. So now I'm thinking, man, I'd like to get back down to South America and do some work. Mm -hmm. And this is right before nine 11, because after that I was like, no, nah, I need to get overseas ASAP. But yeah, um, so I'm discussing with her. So now <laughs> when we met, I met her down doing counter drug stuff. And so <clears throat> that's all she's kind of known as me moving, traveling, doing that type deal. Now I'm here. I'm coming home every night. Freaking. So I'm like, yeah, I need to figure out where, where the next time I'm going, if I'm going back to, you know, back down to South America, or if I'm going to go to a, a SEAL team out here, or, you know, what my next move is. And she's like, wait, what? she's like you're going back into the teams like back into the regular seal teams you're not she's like oh yeah you need to murder those fools she's like yeah she's like yeah don't and so when i would tell her about the buzz thing she she realized that these are people that are going to be my future teammates yeah that my life is going to depend on and so her whole demeanor about you know whether these guys should make it, if you should be nice to them as we're selecting them through the selection phase, the first phase, uh, completely changed. And that is my attitude is that just like with the J.O. at a team, these are folks that your life depends on and you have to give them everything that you have in order to be mm -hmm. successful. Yep. You know? Yep. Well, that's really good, man. Thank you uh, so much for sharing that. That's and one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on here, because one, you go out of your way to help people. You you teach people. And like you mentioned, th there were always some instructors while I was there. Uh, you know, there'd be guys having problems with the combat summer stroke or drown proofing or not tying. But there was always somebody helping you on the weekend. You know, if you were willing to go there on the weekend and and put in the extra time, there's always somebody there to help you. And you were one of those guys when you were yep. a buds instructor. So I just thought it was a really cool idea of yours to let's get together and let's start talking uh, swim critiques and see what, how it goes. So this is, this is our first time doing this ever. So uh, <laughs> together, so let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I'm just gonna share my screen here and uh, we'll get started with the first video. This is the first video of a young man um, sent me a, uh, let me try to open it up a little more. See how that looks. You see that? Oh yeah. Drink it down a little bit. There you go. Oh yeah. Look at there. So let's try this. Let's see see what's going on with this guy. Try to move us around a little bit. There we go. I'll let you go first. Um. Well, we're anytime you're doing combat uh, side stroke. You know, the whole purpose of it is to keep your profile low in the water, right? 
Yep. So uh, just from an operational standpoint, that's why we do it. Uh, so as you're coming in over the beach, um, you're not creating a, a signature that people who might be standing mm -hmm. on the beach or on a pier, uh, people with binoculars, even MVGs, uh, will be able to easily make out. So he's broaching. Uh, he's really popping up out of the water. And also just from a efficiency standpoint, you know, the whole part too about being slippery in the water and we'll talk, I'm sure we'll talk more about that later is trying to be as a streamlined um, and as efficient going through the water column as possible. And when you broach and you're driving yourself up where it's so forcefully, then once you break the surface of the water, that's all that negative uh, weight that is pushing now back down that has that you have to now, as you're swimming, compensate for. So you have this huge weight that's not being buoyed by the water anymore, which is your head, your shoulder, his elbow, all that, all of those things. And also you can see his knee, uh, you see where the, where any of that, water movement where it's almost like little splashes are coming up yep. are all broaching the water. So that's, that's something that needs to get tuned up. He needs to try to keep as much of his body mm -hmm. underneath the surface of the water as possible. Yes, I would definitely agree with that. And, and you're right. He does pop himself up to breathe like that. I mean, that, and believe it or not, that's not bad. I mean, th there are people much I've worse that, worse. Oh yeah. That stick their whole head out of the water. You know, if you can see your bottom ear, coming out of the water that's that's where it gets bad i can live with this but it can be a lot better um right. what i what i make what i see is anytime that you pop up and do this you quit moving forward so you lose your forward momentum now you got this up and down momentum that you're creating and then you move have to move forward so you have to recreate that horizontal momentum every stroke versus right. just turning to breathe and keep the movement going that's right <clears throat> you know, so, you're fighting against the resistance of the water every time you move through the space through you know the the liquid space so i call it the water column yep. even though we're moving laterally yep um you're absolutely right you want to be as efficient and shoot through that water as smooth as possible yeah, another thing too is um, if you notice, there's no glide phase in this stroke. You know, there's a pull, you know, a top arm pull, a bottom arm, kind of a skull, a kick, and a glide, but there's no glide in this phase. He goes right to the next stroke. And then you notice all the extra flutter kicks he's, he's got on there. Just a waste of energy, especially if you, you suck at flutter kicking. You're just going right. to kind of go backwards. Um, yeah, that's and that, and the going backwards thing, and I'm sure we'll talk. We could, we'll get a good example, and maybe for another segment. But that has a lot to do with ankle flexibility. Okay. Um, what do you think about the scissor kick? One, one he kicks. Let me let me start off the wall here. Starts off. He's probably about three feet underwater. L look at that body. Right, pause that. Bridge. Yeah, right here. So, so you see, uh, I'll tell you the one thing that has helped me too is when you get in a position where you're gliding you need to have your chin tucked your arms as outstretched as possible in this instance he's already thinking about stroking and coming to the surface yes so and then his feet are separated yep um i've been able to reduce <laughs> my stroke currently in the pool in a 25 uh, meter pool to about six and a half to seven, depending on how tired I am, strokes. So, um, and that's freestyling. Um, oh, wow. And so, but that's because I'm super efficient and I use the, I use my turns properly, I use the wall properly. But when I can get six and a half is usually when I push off and I pull off and my feet, my ankles are together. A lot of times you forget mm -hmm. um, about, tucking the chin and making it really tight on the push off to where your hands are on top of each other. Um, and your head is in between your shoulders with your tin, chin tucked to your chest and then the feet separated, you know, keeping those feet together. You'd be surprised. You gotta remember on a 25 meter pool mm -hmm. on each end, every 
if you get an extra foot on each end or extra three feet on each end, now we're talking at on a 500 meter swim, you're looking at a, almost a half a pool length of efficiency. Oh, so yeah. if you were, if you were, <clears throat> if you were to finish that swim and someone finished a half a pool length ahead of you, if you were more efficient, you would have finished at the same time as the way I, I described it. Yeah. Plus you're never going to be as fast as you are in that 25 meter pool than those first 10 yards off the wall. I mean, that Facts. is, that is some really, uh, for, for the amount of work you have to do. All and, you gotta do and, I was, and I was going to add, I, I totally yeah. agree. I was going to say that when you said that, it's the, you're also expending almost zero energy. All you have to do is hold a form. You're yeah. not pulling. The only thing that is difficult is the breath hold, which is not that long. And the holding of the correct position in the water. Okay. So. He needs to work on his top arm pull, that top arm pull and glide and timing. And notice the recovery. So uh, when he recovers, look, look how loose it is when he recovers. He's like, you got to keep those arms tight. And then his streamline position, those arms are nowhere near over his head. You yeah. know, like he's, you, he's su what I call supermaning. Yep. You know, when you show those, those, those pictures of Superman flying through the air or the superheroes flying through the air and they have their arms spread apart, there's a, no point at the time um, in your stroke that I can think of where your arms should be separated for more than uh, uh, when, you're, when, they're, uh, when your hands are um, in front of you as you're moving through the water, should they be separated. Um, so you mentioned something about <laughs> where his recovery. So we have the stroke phase, you have the recovery phase, right? So, <clears throat> um, so in his recovery phase where his arms are recovering, like you said, you know, he has them out here, yep, yep. right? So think about how much resistance you're pushing against all this water. You're fighting against all this water and you're keeping, and you're like, it's pushing you th this way as you're trying to move this way in the water column. And so as your hands are coming up, you're pushing all this water and then you're starting to get into your stroke versus as you recover, keeping them streamlined against your body, yep. right? <clears throat> as you're pushing out. Yeah, you should be you should be touching your body as you recover these arms. Your arms shouldn't be out here all loose. Right. That's like swimming with the brakes on. It really yeah, absolutely. is. Absolutely. So, so yeah, you, you mentioned something about Superman. I get the, uh, get guys on this all the time. So they're swimming like this, literally, right? So right. their their hands are side by side, their head is up, but what it should look like is this. Chin right. Tucked. Ears between ears yep. between just like this. And if you yep. can and if you, your hands are on top of each other and you're squeezing, you can even think about squeezing your head as you're doing it. And my chin's either tucked here. Maybe it's about right here. Yeah. Because I want to kind of be looking at the bottom of the pool too to make sure that I'm not doing swimming through the water like this yep. or swimming through the water like that. Good one. All right. You ready for another one? Absolutely. All right. So let me see. These are softballs. Yeah. Yeah. This is, these aren't bad. I appreciate it. <clears throat> not a problem. All right. So <laughs> let's do uh, th this one's not too bad. Let's see how this guy looks. <clears throat> Let's see. Kicking off the wall. A little too deep. It's not pulled up for me yet. Oh, you can't see it? Thought it there you go. Can you see this? You see it now? I see the... Uh, I'm stuck on your uh, screen that is selecting. There we go. I can see right. you now. All right, so I'm going to uh, see if I can just share the screen now, see if it comes up right. Are you seeing this swim? Perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see. Start him off at the wall again. Kicks off the wall. A lot of people go way too deep off this wall. Yep, too deep. If you think about it, if you go three feet down, then you got to come three feet up. You just hit two sides of a triangle, and you're actually swimming further now. Yep. All right. I can add some add some time to your swim, believe it or not. Well, not only that, but then, it, you know, you have to hold your breath longer. And so now you're already going to feel 
um, a little bit different than when you have a good pull. And a lot of times psychology comes into it comes into play when when you're under pressure. Um, and we'll talk about this in a different uh, segment, but the psychology of, you know, having to perform under pressure when you're trying to qualify for something like, you know, make this test. So what will happen is you'll do certain things that decrease your efficiency. If you're not aware of it, then you start like, why am I so tired? Why do I have to gasp for breath? Uh, I normally don't pop up this early. And then so you start having these things affect what you're doing in the water. So yeah. <clears throat> when you go too deep, unless he does it all the time. And so now it's a muscle memory thing, which he doesn't think is peculiar and is used to, which we, we'd have to break him out of. You know, he's not too bad here. He's got a pretty good streamline. Um, when he's in the glide position, but I think his kick kick is weak. No, tell me what you think of his kick here, because he goes nowhere after he kicks. If you know, you see that, like he's maybe getting half a yard out of his kick, maybe. But he's got a good streamline. He's pretty tied up here. I think his kick yeah. is weak. <clears throat> his knee's not coming up high enough. His top knee's not coming up high enough. Right. So the top knee is the driver. Yep. Right. It's kind of like shooting. You, know, you don't have to really do too much side alignment left and right because your eye automatically puts that front sight in between evenly in between the rear sights. It's more about elevation a lot. It's the same thing with swimming. If you drive your top knee up as high as you can, your back leg will go out farther yeah. without having to really think about it. And then when you think about it, then it's even more helpful. So to me, I don't believe that his top knee is coming up high enough from what I can see. Okay. Yeah, I, I can kind of see that. And I, I think he just needs to kick harder. I mean, because there's a difference when when you do this. The difference between kick. kicking and then just bringing your legs together for sure. Yes, absolutely. You, you put more power in behind it. Because I, I, I kind of equate – because I'll see some guys swim in the combat swimmer stroke – and it looks like they're just walking in the park. You know, there's a difference between walking and running a timed run mile and a half as far as effort is concerned. You got to put a little more effort into this 500. You know, it's not a walk in the park. You, know, you got to kick a little harder. You got to pull a little harder and you're going to go a little faster. But like I said, there, there's some technique issues that obviously make all of that work better <clears throat> for you, but. For the most part, most guys, especially non-swimming athletes, need to be in condition to handle these long kickoffs like that because that's that's a good long kickoff. He's coming up, you know, pretty far. But like he just he's just got no leg power. What what I would suggest here in this one is uh, put on a pair of fins and start working your legs a little more, you know practicing your scissor kick with a pair of fins maybe do some kickboard drills i think uh yeah that's the other thing too like we'll talk about it which is uh doing swimming with tools right yep. but i think that's important and make sure those it looks like he if no maybe that's not in his lane it looks like he does have some zoomers there or someone has some zoomers no i don't think those right. are his so yeah. so those you know the short fins you don't because if the fins are too long then now, you know, any NASA chimp could freaking <laughs> swim it in 500 meters. Like it's not, it, it, it's too much of a crutch. It's like mm -hmm. adding, it's adding like uh, <laughs> rockets, you know, to your skateboard. You know, That's you, a good point. <laughs> so you want them as short as possible so you could still get the workout, but um, not be so fatigued uh, and not uh, actually be accelerated because then you're, you, you have this false sense that, oh, yeah, I'm crushing. I'm doing great because I have these long fins on. Yeah, that's true. Good point. All right, let's check this one out. Let's see who we got here. All right, kick off the wall. Okay. Now. Doesn't hold his pull long enough no, immediately. Yeah. That that was that was like you're, you're, yeah. you're, you want to rush to failure. That's awesome. Yeah, well, here's let's yeah, not, here, let's here, not do that. Yeah, here's the problem is that you can get another body length, maybe maybe even two, if you just hold this position here and not do anything. If you if there's flags at the pool, and 
your your initial <clears throat> turns any turn if you're not passing the flags if you're not coming up out of the water after at or after the flags then you are not pulling properly yeah you're, you're not, wasting you're not yeah. turning properly you're wasting so that some, should be a gauge yeah you're wasting free momentum i mean yeah. th this wall is free momentum right here let let's just pretend you're trying to do a vertical jump you're just doing a horizontal jump and you just stay streamlined you can hold that streamline for i i usually try to get a minimum standard of right i'd say probably right about here for your first breath you know, for sure and it could, yeah thing. and if you could back that up just a little bit right here uh, yeah so if you back it up look at where his uh as he immediately pushes off right yeah go ahead and run it right there so he's already has his head straight up and yep. is pushing against the water again Again, if you're if your head is here and you're streamlined, and when you come up, you're here, right? Yep. Then you're already in the motion, and you're already in the water column as smooth as you possibly could be. If you come up and your first stroke is here, then you're pushing all all this water is going against your face versus slipping over your arm, over your head, over your shoulder. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that yeah. that right there, he's already thinking about breathing. Yes. Like so, the feet are together. I like it. Feet and ankles together. You know, yep. he obviously could have held that position, but um, but that head being arced like that, obviously he's thinking about air versus saying nice and streamlined. You want to be yep. looking at the bottom of the pool as you're moving through the water column, yep. unless you're in the midst of doing the side stroke, and then you're at a three quarter angle. But yep. Yeah. And, you know, he's kind of, I, I think his problem on this one is he's breathing like he does a breaststroke. Like he's trying right. to pop up to breathe right here versus right. turning to breathe like he's doing a freestyle. You know, top right. arm pull is going to come across and you just, you know, this combat swimmer stroke is a mix of half freestyle with that top arm and breathing and a breaststroke recovery. Right. And you can do a breaststroke kick or you can do a scissor kick, whichever one you want. But you that is basically how it works. You you want to breathe like you're doing freestyle. You want to recover like you're doing breaststroke. So we've bastardized two classic swim methods and turned it into a combat swimmer stroke, <laughs> basically. But right. but there's a lot of mix ups on this because a lot of people who who swim try to do a breaststroke kick and really have no business doing a breaststroke kick because they've never done breaststroke before in their life and probably have not worked those lateral movements or muscles like they should. And they're probably running athletes, which would make their scissor kick probably naturally a little more strong than the breaststroke kick. That's just my observation of most people that are non-swimming athletes coming into this game. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a swimming background and you've done breaststroke in your life, you're probably going to crush the combat swimmer stroke with a breaststroke kick. Most right. people do not. All right, but let, let's let's tear down uh, his kick a little bit, and you, you'll see what I'm talking about there. So, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lack of commitment. So so, and what I mean by that is, are we doing the side stroke or are we doing some other type of stroke when you, either you're staying on your side and you're turning over three quarter your your belly button shouldn't be shouldn't be uh facing the bottom of the pool unless it's off the initial uh turn yeah. um, flip turn mm -hmm. right when you're in the glide phase and even then it should be only for a moment because even as you're gliding you should be moving into the position of the side stroke it's more efficient. Why are we wasting our time to do all that movement all at once on the surface? Again, yep. causing more resistance. So as he's going through, go ahead, run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I see here is he starts off like he he starts off like he's doing a scissor a kick. Stroke, almost. Well, well, he opens like up. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. It's a combo of breaststroke and scissor kick. But yeah, he's on his belly for one. So I'm going to call this one a 
So that's why I feel like he's in that breaststroke mode. I he's agree. on his belly. His 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 legs are bent. His knees are spread. Like he's going to do that breaststroke. Yep. Kind of piece, and then he kind of turns to his side. To yeah. and he may believe that it derives. Uh, it it gets him more power, but. Yeah, what happens with a lot of people is even if they started off on their side and they begin this like a scissor kick, they roll over on their belly and they in the middle of their kick and they turn their scissor kick into a breaststroke kick just yeah. by shifting their body 90 degrees or 40 right. degrees, whatever. Yeah. And they uh you know, they completely lose the power function that the hips are supposed to provide in this movement. So if you can see here, this is, looks like the start of a scissor kick. He's on his side yeah. and then he turns into a breaststroke kick. You see that? Right. Yep. So and another it. thing too is watch his head. The people who are watching this, look at his head. He is head straight up looking towards the wall. It, that is also another way to push against where you're going. You're getting resistance. There's yep. no reason to look, at the where you're going in front of you in in the pool yep. there's not a tugboat getting ready to run over you you don't have to worry about people shooting at you <laughs> um you don't have to look and make sure that you're in a, on the proper sight line because like oh i need to make sure that i'm not drifting because of current all the reasons why you would pop up there are reasons to pop up and look ahead of you for sure oh yeah in the pool during this phase where you're trying to um get peak performance so that you can reduce your time is not one of those times. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple things you can do. I'd probably get a kickboard, stay on your side and just do scissor kicks. Yes. Stay on your side the whole time. Scissor kick and see if you can glide for two Mississippis. Kick one Mississippi, two Mississippi kick one Mississippi, two Mississippi kick and just see if you can produce two seconds of glide from your kick um, right and that'll any... also help train the head because when you're using your kickboard and you have it right here your head has to lay on its shoulder with the kickboard underneath your arm i don't know if you can see that yep see and it. so here's the kickboard and so as you're kicking there's it's almost a i mean it's going to be super uncomfortable to do this <laughs> yeah and that's how you should feel so make sure that you're laying the head on the side as you're doing that yeah i tell people all the time if you're trying to lay down right you're trying to lay down and then you're doing this to swim if you were to do that for any amount of time your neck's going to be really sore especially yeah, and after, it's not good long term oh yeah it, it's painful you know and plus you're just you're just stopping yourself you know every, your head is just creating drag you know you, you, sh you should think like a torpedo you know, and be rounded at the end, not some big head sticking out, you know, trying to slow you down. All right, let's see. See what we got. I think I got some more in here. Let me see what we got. Let me get out of this one first. Uh, oh. Dang it. Did, we, did I lose you? I just, no, I just, okay, good, good, good. Thought I screwed up. All right. Um let's see all right so here's a good one i want to get your advice on this one all right i don't know who this this idiot is but um let's see if <laughs> see if you can recognize him <laughs> share screen oh i'm sorry thought i was sharing screen dang it why can't i share screen here I'm sharing the screen, I think, or maybe I just. All right, let me get it's up here. locked on that uh, on your your yeah, uh, scene I, selection screen. I see it, huh? Very strange. So you're not seeing this now. I can see your mouse now. I can okay. see your mouse moving around on on that same screen. Ah, uh, it's not working. Probably just need to hmm. minimize or highlight. All bring right. the other one up. Let me do this again. Yeah, some some reason I, I got to go into. Uh, Got to go into a different way to do this. All right. So you can see this, right? Yep. All right. You see when I bring this guy up? You see so this? you double clicked it. Your mouse has gone away. <clears throat> but that's all. I still see that screen that showed the video one, video two image. Yeah. yeah. Let me see what's going on here. 
me try a different way. Better? No? So I see, see you. You see me. Damn it. All right, let me cl cl close out some stuff here. All right. So whatever you did last time. Yeah, no, it's it's. I thought I was. All right, so share screen. All right, let's go here. All right, so I'm going to go into my downloads. Here we go. Got it. You, you can see it now. Okay. Yep. I wonder why that's going so weird. All right, so who is this guy? <laughs> All right, so I want your critique. This is actually me swimming the combat swim. Yep. Oh, yeah. So I just want to see um, – give me some critiques on your end because I'm always trying to get better too. So, you know, you, you're not learning. You know, if you stop learning, you, you've stopped learning. So I'm not trying to uh, act like I'm perfect. You can see that? Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm just watching. Okay. Um, I think uh, I I like pretty much everything. Your three quarter angle, which is good. Uh, and then I I think I would want you. I know it's a little hold. Head. All right. So so you know, go ahead, run it back to the wall. Okay. So when you pull and you do that, you do that initial pull here. Yeah. Right. And hold. Okay. Hold I want longer? you to hold that a little bit longer. Okay. Like I think you'll get more. I think you'll get more out of each pull if you held that piece. There's two parts to that glide. Well, it's actually three, right? Mm -hmm. There's a push off. Yep. There's the pull. Yep. And then there's a pause, because you want to glide in that in that position, because you're getting so so you you push off in one position. Right. And so you're streamlining, streamlining, streamlining. I'm starting to run out. I'm starting to run out of momentum. So you have to find that sweet spot between I'm at full speed. Yeah. I'm starting to slow down. And where, when I do this pull, what is the sweet spot between me slowing down to a speed that's not as fast as my next momentum shift? Right. Okay. So the initial push off, I'm super fast. Like you commented earlier in the video, this is the fastest you'll ever be. Mm -hmm. Now, here again, I'm as fast. Uh, it's the fastest I've ever I'm ever going to be in the pool. So there's two parts of that. Okay. You have the push off with your legs, yep. streamline, and then you're gonna like like we've talked about. You hold that for a bit. When you start feeling the slowdown, then you pull. When you start feeling the slowdown, then you recover and push out, and then you're doing another pull, and you're on the top of the surface moving. Gotcha. Gotcha. So. Let's see. There's one other thing too. Is oh, that's good. Let's see. I want to look at your feet. Okay. A little bit. Might not see all of them there, but no, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No, that's that's pretty good. That's what that would be the major thing. Other thing too is you have uh, on your push off, and it could have been just one or two instances. It might yeah. be different. Is just your hands are. I mean, now we're we're really nitpicky, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, if you watch yourself, and you have to look at other times in which you've uh, when you push off again, you're as you're reaching through your your hand is in this fashion versus okay. this fashion. So you know. You know what's great for tuning that up? What's that? Is paddles. Oh, okay. Pull paddles. Pull paddles. Like on your hands, you just <laughs> those paddles yeah, yeah. that you know that you go around doing side stroke with those will immediately because if you go enter the water wrong or you're in the water column at any point and not being as efficient as possible, you, they'll move. They'll, oh, they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. the water column will move your hands out of the way. You'll absolutely know on your. On your pull, on your initial push, your pull, your glides, everything as you recover. I mean, if your hands are any kind of weird as you're trying to recover, you'll feel it. You'll get the feedback almost immediately. And when we do our little, when we do a segment on tools, uh, then 
uh, we'll we'll go deeper into that. Okay, that sounds good. Well, that's cool, man. Um, but that but that last that last one was the best one today. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Look good. Sometimes I have to show my guys how to do it. Right. And oh, I, for I, sure. I just like, just, you know, sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. And if I could just film, yeah, have them film me doing it and then, you know, compare it to theirs. And then they can, then they come back the next time and they have stuff fixed. It's really yeah. amazing. It, it no, really it's is. modeling. And, yeah. and that's, that's, that's huge. I use that in visualization training. I do. So, um, and the other thing is like when I'm, instructing i don't instruct from the top of the pool like i it used to amaze me like my coaches over the years uh most of them would just tell me what to do from the pool edge and never show or demonstrate and so um i i i use i always used to get in the water with the guys and say hey look this is this is kind of what it needs to look like yeah yeah well that that's what i figured you you would do because i i remember when you were at the team I mean, you were so fast in the water. I mean, any swim day, I could see you were excited because you were going to yeah. kick every, you were going to kick everybody's ass at the team <laughs> on swim day. <laughs> you know, the unique thing about you know the buds and and the teams is like everybody comes into this with some natural strengths that are just ungodly. I mean, they're they're just amazing i mean whether you you grew up on the streets of detroit and could hot wire anything or you know you're you know, you're on swim teams or you know cross country whatever i mean just absolute animals and then then they got good at all their weaknesses too and then they, they brought all that to the table and they just made a hell of a team so you know i i, I look back with fondness with uh you know one I remember meeting you at Buds when I was a midshipman going to Mini Buds. Now they call it SOAS, SEAL Officer Assessment mm -hmm. Selection. But back then it was it was basically summer camp for midshipmen for three weeks. And uh, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. But I remember you in third phase running around, making fun of the midshipmen, which was, was well-deserved. <laughs> we, we, we deserved it because we didn't know what we were doing. and We were just a soup sandwich. But not only that, you made fun of us, but then then you would – say something on the back end of that that made us laugh but also gave us hope for like come back next year stronger here's what you need to focus on something like that and you know that that was always great to hear anybody be somewhat welcoming you into a community that you're not even a part of yet you know but there is a doorway to get there and it's for called sure. buds you know buds is the test you know you got to get two the training then you got to get through the training and you know what better person to to help me you know explain combat swimmer stroke technique than a first phase buds instructor master chief seal you know so i i'm very grateful that you took your time to uh, do this and I, i'd love to keep doing it because you know the, we've only, sure we've only touched on a tip of the iceberg of all the issues that go wrong so oh yeah there's so many different things to talk about no i appreciate you having me i i think this is this is great and it's something that i continue to do i continue to teach people how to swim um how to swim how to get over fears in the water oh, yeah. and so uh so this is something you know near and dear to my heart and uh working with you who've been basically helping people like really get past some of their weaknesses to accomplish something they 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 really want yeah. something that is you know a, a, a dream and a goal and um so the uh doing this together is 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 a good thing for me it's a good thing for my soul too oh well cool i appreciate it you know because when you brought it up it was like it's a no-brainer we have to do this so yeah um, if you don't know who Eric Burks is, first of all, you got to check him out. I'm going to share my screen here and just show you. So, you know, this is his um, Instagram, Eric, A-R-I-K, 5326. Yo, Master Chief, got some cool pictures here. Funny stuff. <laughs> you post some fun stuff there. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's doing some great stuff. He, elite leadership, mental performance consulting, coach, you know, working with professional athletes. And, you know, he's, he's a wealth of information. So 
you guys should check him out for sure. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, Stu. Absolutely. Hey, until next time, my friend. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So you guys Let's check, get it. Yeah. You guys check out Eric5326. I'm over there at Stu Smith50. And um, we'll be uh, sharing more of these uh, CSS critique swim videos with the uh, Master Chief Eric and Stu. <laughs> All right. Later. Yep. We'll see you.